so you would think that I think that some people just assume that if you like a triple A game your knees. I'm listening that if you like a triple A game you um that you got paid to say that and so um, this is like a fireside chat yeah so you um but the thing is is that the way that inside gaming said it was that they said one of the things i really like i think that inside gaming and giant bomb have a similarity in the sense that inside gaming are always talking about transparency yes they and always say we got paid to make this video by these people we're uh, going to tell you that right now we got paid to make this video right we're not going to pretend like we didn't and that we, you know, and it's not but like they make videos. But they don't make videos. I'm not against that. Well, no, but that's what they're saying. They're saying, look, the thing is, is that we we could use the money. And if somebody's going to throw so us a shit ton of money to make a video, we're going to do it. Since I'm not familiar with Inside Gaming. Inside yeah. Gaming, what are they primarily? Like, is it it's a group of dudes? Uh, Yeah, it's sort of basically three guys. Uh. It's uh, Adam Kovic, who started it, I believe, Bruce Green, and James, I can't remember his name, uh, his last name. But um, it was basically Adam Kovic and Bruce Green that kind of, they've known each other for a long time. But they're part of, Inside Gaming are, they have a show on Machinima, um, where they basically kind of do a sort of, what's been going on in video games in the last week. And it's very funny, and it's a kind of almost like an MTV-style okay. video game show. Almost like a, wait, what, Tosh.0? Um, yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not endorsing actually, Tosh, though. Well, I actually don't really care for their machinima content all that much. I like their own show that they do as part of machinima... But it, they don't put it... I don't think that it goes onto the Machinima YouTube channel. It goes on their own YouTube channel. So it's like their thing. Do and they, that's where they get to do all of their funny videos. And they get to talk very candidly about what they do a lot of the time. My other question is... So when they make... I, I can't even think of what this video would be like. That they would be making for the companies. So they give that disclaimer. but then So then what is the video like? Or what is it? Well, the interesting thing, the, it's interesting because they get asked to do videos based off the, because their whole thing is, I mean, again, I, I, it's kind of weird that I keep comparing them to Giant Bomb, but because they're not really that similar. But like you've said about Giant Bomb is that you like it because of the personalities. Yes. And I like Inside Gaming because of the personalities. So and, they're, they're, and so they're they, both personality based things. They're, yeah, they're very personality-based. Inside Gaming is deliberately very, very funny. I mean, they they are funny in a way that is like it's professional funny. Yes. Like they really understand comedy and they understand right within the 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 game the video game space. So well, so what it sounds like so is they get asked to make videos because they're kind of off the wall. And they're very honest, and they've got this really kind of uh, wacky but very deliberate sense of humor. What it sounds to me, companies want from them. Yeah, but what it sounds to me is like they, their content is more synthesized, whereas a giant bomb's content is more organic. Like giant bomb, when they do their videos, they're funny. Not because you're not watching it. I don't think to myself that any at any point they're like, I got to be funny or how am I going to set this up? Or it, they're just shooting the shit with some friends, but their their personalities are just funny. Not to say that these other guys aren't, but their brand of product or, you know, whatever is. It's more thought out. It's thought out. Giant Bombs isn't thought out. They just go here. Let's do this. Well, I don't know. But not to say that there's no effort that goes into it. It's not... It, that's difficult in and of itself, but I don't think that no. Well, I don't know. I I think that you you. It, I mean, it's sort of hard to describe anything that 
because I know you've not really watched Inside Gaming. So it's kind of I'm so I'm describing it to somebody that's never seen it. It's they don't I wouldn't say that it because that's what actually what I really like about them is that and that's why I think they're so good at what they do is that it's not scripted it's not thought out in that sense it is still very organic i think that they're very good at picking video games that they know are going to be suited to their brand of humor um they play very funny games or well, not funny games but games that are just sort of ripe for the comedy picking you know what i mean Yes, but, um, but so I mean, but that would go back to my point of that's more that that definitely is organic, or not organic. That's more it's, it's like synthesized. Well, I mean, in the sense that they pick games that they know are going to probably be quite funny to play, oh, okay. or at least be you could make fun of. But right. It, but as far as the actual humor is concerned, um, it's it, it that is all very organic. Oh, okay. But say, so, I mean, like for example, they were asked by. This isn't even a video game thing. They were actually asked by Mountain Dew to make a commercial based off. It was supposed to be like a like a you know drink Mountain Dew while you're video gaming, basically. Yeah, like and they be made stream. Yeah, but then the thing and the thing was Mountain Dew were like, yeah, make it. You know, the corporate thing was like, may I make it real funny, guys, because you know we love your videos and they're so funny, and we'll yeah, give and you a bunch of money. You guys are so underground, and yeah. So we're underground too. Well, and do so we in, Inside Gaming made the most fucking ridiculous. They were like, oh fuck yes! So they made the most ridiculous commercial you've ever seen, and <laughs> and Mountain Dew said, um, no thanks. Really? Yeah, they were like. That's no, we can't show that. I wonder if they still got paid. No, they didn't. Um, they made, and it was hilarious. I mean, it was just so crazy, and I mean, I can't even really describe it. I mean, it was totally inside gaming, though. Was the funny thing? The um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of comparisons because I know what you're talking about. I'm gonna have to give them a a watch or whatever uh, later because it. Well, I mean, they don't they don't do long videos. They're very quick. Oh. Um but I don't know. I mean, <laughs> just it it's really hard to describe their videos. Well, I need to I think I just need to branch out in general because with my problem is that I know video games. I like making video like I've done a podcast, so I I like the entertainment aspect of it. Um, you know, and I'm all right at it. But I generally only watch Giant Bomb, to be honest. And I I almost... I, I definitely need to get more... Um, what is it? Exposure to, to see different ways of going about it. Because I kind of... Most of what I've thought of so far, a lot of the, you know, the inspiration comes from Giant Bomb. Because I almost like everything that they do. I like their demeanor, their style. I like, you know, they're funny. Like... If I were to think of how to do this, I would want to do it just like that. They just look like they're having a good time. All, like the, They're just having a blast playing video games with some good friends. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, exactly. Again, that's um, my love of inside gaming is, is largely to do with that. They just seem like cool guys. I mean, they're obviously they're video game nerds because you have to be. You can't pretend, you can't have a channel or have a website that is about video games and not admit to... A love of video games? Well, not just a love of it, but, I mean, you've got to be really into video games yes. in order to be any good at that kind of thing. And that is that that is a well, considered the, no, a, nerd, I think a nerdy it, thing. I think it goes a step further, though, because it's not it's not just video games themselves. If, if you want to be good or... At being a video game personality that does that as a living, you you have to know the industry though too. Like I love video game news. I like the politics behind it, um, and you you need to know that because it helps to show a context to the game that you're mm. talking about. So you know, um, but I think we've talked about it before. Is that the, it's the what the ones that I don't like personally are the nerdy nerds. Like, in what I, I think the example I always use is I don't give a shit 
as a normal man human being you know as a i'm a normal man right you think so no i would not say so okay well anyways um i don't want to hear some nerd go on some sort of rant and let its voice get all high pitched because of some weird import japanese game about like dating and there are some other there are some other uh podcasts that i listen to that there are like that where it's just like you're too far you we're like the everyday man. That's well, I think saying. I think that there's a lot of YouTubers, well, I, I, yeah, YouTubers who are very self righteous, and they're very um, they're very aware of their own success. Oh, uh, see, that's that's that. so do I. I ha- and, uh, hate it. There's a there's an English guy called he's uh, his YouTube name is Nerd Cubed, uh, and he does it as like nerd with a three. Yeah. Right. And he's got lots of channels. But his main channel, he plays games on, and he's got like a million subs or something. And he's got all these. I, you fans. know, I always I find it interesting that you use the word subs. I think I just think it's hilarious. That's what we call it, man, subs. You're the industry, like uh, industry talk, like submarine. Subs. Uh, yeah, I got he did four point six k subs. He's got a bunch of subs. Yep, that's a submarine sandwich. Yeah, I ma- I I imagine a swimming pool full of submarines. Check out all my subs. I imagine a, <laughs> I imagine a table that has a spread of really long but different kinds of subs. Yeah, yeah. So he's got lots of those. Yeah. So he's got submarine sandwiches. He's got over a million. He'll feed you. I don't even know actually how many he's got now. He's he'll probably feed got you for days. Two million. He could feed an army literally with his, the amount of subs that this man has. He could for a day, one day. What? Yeah. A week. All right. A, a week. day sounds. A anyway. Day. Okay. So sub sub sub. Well, sub, so I mean, subs. so he's nerd. So his name is Nerd Cubed, right? So that's that. You already re- you already know what's coming. The thing is, is that he's such a fucking nerd. Yes. That it makes me sick. I can't. And on top of that, he's he's always doing. I was I was actually subscribed to him for a little while because I liked. And then the you wanted thing, to punch your own nuts. No, well I did because the one thing was that <laughs> the, the one thing was that he. I really liked the games that he played. Oh, he always okay. played really interesting games, and he played a lot of games... He had games a similar that, taste to you. Well, he played a lot of games that I'd never heard of, and I'd not seen another YouTuber play, and I was like, remember Cargo Commander? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He I was played just, that. I was going to play that the other day. That sounds fun. Yeah, well, so Cargo Commander was a game that he played, and I was, I've was i never seen anybody else play that. And, and I was like, whoa, that that's... Bad either. No, it's pretty good. Yeah. And when he was playing, I was like, oh, shit, this game looks really fucking cool. And I got it on Steam for, I think it was on sale, and I got it for like $2 or something. So the thing was, was that he played lots of really cool games, and I liked the games that he played. And I was I was subscribed to him for a, a long time, just because... Long time. I loved him long time. But the problem was, was that I eventually, I just could not stand his nerdiness, and I couldn't stand the fact that he was so fucking aware of how successful he was on YouTube. And he was always making these videos, these long rambling videos about how people in the people in the uh uh comment section they need to like relax and um he was always telling people how to behave and how to do this and that and you know I I'm a success and I I don't, I don't deserve this kind of treatment and all this and I was like you know what you fucking idiot you're on you're on the fucking internet for everyone to see. And this is going to happen. And so pretty much you need to just fucking get over it and get over yourself. Yeah, but what is what was he bitching about in particular? That's what I don't get. Oh, I can't remember. I mean, he end, he ended up where he now does not allow some um, comments on his YouTube videos anymore. What I wonder is why he actually were, shut w- them off. Why were people being dicks to him? Because there's lots of people. I mean, m- most of the video. M- I got to a point where most of the videos that he did were so fucking nerdy that I couldn't help myself, and I would go in the comments and say, "You're you're such a fucking nerd. It makes me want to gouge out my own eyeballs because I can't stand it." You actually commented on his YouTube. On yeah, I do. I do that. I don't. I've never commented or participated in anything. I on actually the got. I ever. actually. You know what? The the worst thing was. I actually um. There's one. There's another guy called um Mark. What's his name? Markiplier or something like that. It's like I don't know how quite he got that name, but he's he's quite popular. He's got like four million, I think, or something. I say quite four I mean, million. What four million subs? Subs. 
And uh, maybe it's not that many, but it's in the millions anyway. And he's he's awful. I fucking hate him. I, I've never been subscribed to him. I never would. He's one of these guys. He's really loud. Mad subs all day. He's really loud and he's really brash. And he's really full of himself. Uh, I, I'm pretty. I, I'm sure that at some point he's tried to suck his own dick, and may even have succeeded. I don't know. But I commented on a video that he did. He he's also one of these people that yells and screams because he thinks that that's cool. And, l- and oh, the people that yeah. subscribe to him like it. They're like, "Oh, he's so funny." And I'm like, "No, he's not funny. He just yells. He just yells and screams all the time at everything." It doesn't even matter what kind of game he's playing. He's, he's always got the same attitude towards anything. It's just yells and screams. Yeah, but is it, is it goes like crazy. He, is it like yells for joy? Like is he just so excited that he can't handle it, or is he just bitching because he thinks that being he's kind of like bitching and just being really loud about it, and it's just really annoying. Uh, and I hate it. But of course, the it worst sounds thing, like I would hate it. Yeah, and this, but the worst thing you can do on YouTube is comment and say this is fucking awful. But I made that mistake. I actually. I can't believe I you commented on, a, on something. On a I'm video. still surprised. He did a video of the forest, and he was just yelling and screaming. There was no actual content to it at all. It wasn't like the gameplay was that cool, or he was doing anything interesting. He was just screaming at the game for five minutes. And I made a yeah, comment. Yeah, but what were the, some of the things that he was screaming? No, it just it's not that he's screaming about something. That's it's just that like when we comment on. Imagine if when we're commenting on a game that we were just doing that loudly. <laughs> That's what he does. Oh. This game is great. I can't... I, this He's is like, the... oh, the forest. I'm playing the forest. Oh, no. Uh... Oh, there's a thing. Oh, shit. Oh, there's a guy there. Oh, oh fuck. Oh, oh, okay. oh God. Oh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a house now. And I'm like, whoa, dude, I'm f- fucking fi- chill I'm the fuck out, man. I've, yep, I know these people. Oh, I hate it. I would, I would so too. I, I Not enough to comment. comment on a YouTube video still, but anyway. No, I did, because I said, I said, what is up with this guy? Is he on steroids? <laughs> And then it was weird because, well, here's the thing: as I had you, I had and my, that's James, folks. I had my YouTube account set to notify me when other people commented on my comments, and my f- fucking YouTube account just got lit up within seconds, mostly with people You're going, lit. "Well, if you don't like it, then don't watch it." And so I spent about a week. <laughs> typing, no way. Yeah, <laughs> I spent about a week typing, "Fuck you." Oh, so it goes fuck deeper. You, fuck you. <laughs> But then there was then it got weird because there was a there was one fucking little prick okay. who says who says uh, why do you even why why are you even saying that he's on steroids steroids don't, don't make you angry they don't make you yell and scream what I, did and you, I was like did, did are you, you just fucking re- out of your mind did you just respond with a with a roid rage I said I was like are you on steroids don't well no, who is that who is the wrestler that killed his family because of that. Yeah, well, that's what I. But that's the thing, though. There's did like you link to that? Pretty much every, news article. No, you know what I did? I did. <laughs> I went one better. I went to the uh, United States Drug like Administration website, uh-huh, uh-huh. and I looked up uh, the wait, wait, so their this is real definition. Life? No, in real life. <laughs> their definition of steroid abuse, because it was the thing that he said. The this kid, this little prick, he said. Keep in mind, this is a YouTuber, everybody. Yeah. No, no, no! Not the YouTuber himself. No, one the of commenter. His, one of his no, no. little fuckers. Yeah. Who thinks that, he, that this guy's videos are amazing? He said, "Steroids don't make you angry," and I said, "Well, no, steroids don't, but anabolic steroids do. Get that straight." Second of all, here's a link to the like fucking USA Schooled. Drug Administration Boom. website, right? That says that. It says right here. Anabolic steroids will cause do you side realize effects what, include yeah, but do you realize what you did? rage, shrunken penis. <laughs> As a grown like, man, I Murderous don't... tendencies, suicidal no, tendencies. That's... And I was like, here, go, go and read that, you little fuck. What was his response? He didn't respond. Well, of course. No. Because so t- I schooled so him So do you take on... this as a victory? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Aw. All right. I well. mean, it didn't, it didn't stop. I basically... I, I, <laughs> I had to um I've had to disable notifications on my YouTube because I was literally getting two or three responses to this a day for about a month. How, I mean it's the journey I guess that you went through. It was incredible. I mean all I said was I think he might be on steroids. And you, that, so that aff- was your, was your initial comment just humorous? 
Well, no, it was. I mean, it was somewhat serious. I was pretty much saying <laughs> this guy's a fucking lunatic. What's wrong with him? Is he on steroids? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and also, I said I don't. Well, the, the, you said stop yelling. The mistake I made also was that I said I don't understand why people find him funny. Can somebody explain to? Can one of you little dicks explain it to me? That might have I, been you know, where they did I didn't. wish you could. Is there any way to pull up the transcript of this conversation? Uh, I mean, y- yeah, maybe. Uh-huh. I mean, it was a long time ago, and I don't, I don't know how, how I would even get to it. Well, anyways, also on my phone. I don't. Well, know. we'll talk about games we've been playing. Sure, I've been playing Mordor. Mord, you want Mord? Is that what? <laughs> is I want the sequel. The sequel is going to be Shadows of Mordor. Mordor. No. Is. Do you want more door? More doors. I had a really good one before you said your shitty one. Um, <laughs> yeah, more door. It's pretty good. The when everybody when I've had people watch me play, they're like, it looks like Batman, and I guess everybody says, it's, but I never played Batman, which is kind of a shame. I don't I guess. know why you've never played Batman because I'm an I idiot. Told you millions of times that well, you never listen to me. Well, that's right. You would play Batman, and you'd be like, oh my god, this is the best game ever, and I'd go. Oh, I've only yeah, been yeah, telling yeah, you that's that for this is what would ha- Yeah, that's what would happen every time, too. I'm well, don't not, don't I'm play the newest one. Play uh, the first. The first. I heard the first or the second. I heard those are both almost actually, equally as good. Actually, I would go with this. If you wanted to play one of them, I would play the second one. Only because the one thing that I found frustrating well, more with the first world. one... Yeah, is that you've got... Because Batman can fly, but you don't ever really get the chance to fly in the first one because it's just not big enough. Did you ever play Spider-Man? One of the Spider-Man games? Um, I shit. I forget yeah. which system it was for. One of them was awesome. It had like the the best web slinging system, where the webs the webs kind of just attached off screen to random you know invisible objects. But it was sweet because you could r- jump off the roof, and when you were running around the city, it was it was a lot of fun to actually traverse because you would just jump and then just web sling. You're like, I don't even care. I'm not even gonna fall. Well, yeah, but the only problem with that was that that was all there was to that game. That I was think the only you were bit right. was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Batman, you've I didn't got play it the long. fun of. There's a lot. Well, the, see, the thing with the Batman was that it was cool because the combat There's was really stealth, awesome. Stealth, though, too, right? The stealth was. I mean, it was a little bit linear in that. I mean, you basically you'd end up in this room and you'd have to clear it out of guys, so it was always a little bit repetitive, but it was still fun. Well, that's like. Um, but the flying around was really fun in the second one, and the combat never gets old. You know, a game I feel like that about is Far Cry Three. Far Cry Three gets repetitive in that when you when uh, you yeah. when you encounter a village, it's the same thing. You can think of the village as a room. It might be an open world well, game, and the, and the towers as well. Right, those radio towers. Yeah, that you climb to get like to whatever. But I don't mind the radio towers because at least they change those up. So the path that they you do go get a up is more difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so you're like, all right, fine. This is like a new little climbing challenge, and I have fallen off a couple and died. Um, yeah, I've done that. But I love the gunplay in far cry the gu- the guns yep. just feel great the movement feels good the game well, runs great did it's... you ever play um what was the other game that crytek made no i've it always wanted really to good. play them um there's far cry and there's crisis crisis i always because that sounds that was awesome crisis because it's like robotics in futures well the suit shit. was really fun yeah and the gunplay was awesome yeah i feel like crytek as far as like first person shooters go they make because I like I like the combination of uh, um, because you you do actually have I think there's a, there's bullet drop isn't there to some degree in, in, in Far Cry I think I don't know I, no I don't think so I think so I mean there's like accuracy in the sense uh, that no because it, it, it there's no bullet drop but it's th- there's accuracy in the sense that when you're zoomed in it does the whole scope shake so right. it's shaking and then you're like but um and also in Far Cry with Far Cry 3, I found that there's just a set of weapons that I always use. That's it. End of story. Once I got the silenced sniper rifle, yeah, I was like, this is it. Why do I need another... another? I don't care if the other ones are more powerful or whatever, but I literally can snipe a dude from... And nobody hears me. You can also hunt better. So what the fuck? I seem to remember that you un- you, I, you, s- you kind of unlocked most of the weapons pretty early. Yes. I mean, you could pretty much get everything that you needed way before you were done with the campaign. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I say, say needed. I mean, like, because you had to go and hunt stuff to be able to get pouches for things and, you know? Yes. 
Which I, I, I mean, I like, I like get, too. I get very so, uh, sidetracked by that because I'm like, yeah, we're going to go and fucking skin a shark. Well, I'm going to do that right now. I get sidetracked by it because oh. I guess what I found frustrating about that, now that I think about it, is the fact that I was I like how able we started to... started out with Mordor and now we're talking about Far Cry. Yeah, but the fact that I could... I had the ability to get the largest bags for everything immediately by just hunting pissed me off. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. No, not not in a bad way, but it was frustrating because it almost like the game was on pause for hours. I didn't actually touch the story mission oh. just because I was like, w- why not I, fucking I, get this out of the way <laughs> now? And then I'll have slots for four weapons off the uh, right off the get. Let's do this. Well, see, that's the th- <laughs> that's the funny thing is that's always what I've loved about. That's always what I've loved about um, open world games. Is that f- most good open world games will give you the ability immediately to do anything but the main campaign. Um, and I like that. Because I, I, I don't... I have a problem with linear games. As you I know. know you do. Not a problem with it, but I just... Um, Why do you hate them? What did they do to you in the past, I guess? Because they're too linear. Because they I don't like being forced... They're focused. That's what I like to think of them as. Well... Maybe I mean if there's a if there's a real purpose, I mean like for example, uh, I was just again speaking of inside gaming. They were talking about um, single player games and how um, in the case of shooters, the single players kind of don't really exist as as they used to because most single player games now the big focus is on the multiplayer and not so much oh. on the single player. And they were saying how. Modern Warfare, the original Modern Warfare, had a really great campaign. Well, right. Well, it's um, because but back then it then, just got crazier and crazier and crazier to the point where it's just it now it's just fucking yeah. Nuts. But that's that's yeah. But that's just like the general ev- evolution of a shooter because they that was at a critical point in gaming in as a whole where the online accessibility became more and more. And so with that game, it's essentially they started off and. They just created a good first-person shooter, their story and whatever. Luckily, that first game also coincidentally had good multiplayer because I don't think they focused on it as much as, you know, that it was almost an not an afterthought, but they focused on the single player, mm. the, and then, but then as people wanted to get online more and more and be competitive about it, that's when it stopped. It stopped mattering because people didn't give a shit anymore about it. They wanted the newer, shinier gun to shoot their the dudes online with or new maps right well so but so the thing was that um and i totally agree is that i often think about how good that modern warfare campaign was it was really fucking good but there's still but the problem is now is that as they said on inside gaming they said well the thing was was that uh whoever was whoever it was that was making the single players for the game's subsequent to modern war- the original modern warfare was that their approach was make it bigger and badder well, not badder I, I mean like more badass i like the comparison between um modern warfare games and michael bay movies michael modern yeah. warfare games are michael bay movies they're just there's not necessarily anything too emotionally attaching there it's just they're flashy and they're fast and that's it yeah, but I thought, but they know, but it's I mean, like so, fireworks, right? But my no, well, I think, but I think you're missing my point, though. My point is that I the, wasn't even paying attention. Is the, to your the point. modern the modern warfare campaign was really good, and they got worse because they got more elaborate and because they got louder and bigger and more ridiculous to the point where now the complaint is that the modern warfare campaigns are so fucking ridiculous, right? That they're just not enjoyable anymore, and I don't really know why they decided it was necessary why they've always thought it necessary to make every single ca- player campaign in call of duty more ridiculous than the last one why couldn't you just say right this is a really good tone for a good single player the original modern warfare campaign just keep doing that no there's a there's a larger what it is is this though the, there's a larger social commentary to that in that they pursued what the general population wanted. And so... Th- I don't it, think that the general population wanted no, the more thing is, and more is, outlandish single-player campaigns, no, though. Uh, the, uh, 
but this is what I'm trying to say is that that I think a lot of people forget that. Look, the majority of the the majority of the world are idiots. You know that's why, that's why. Um, if you look on, I don't watch a lot of cable television, but that's why when you watch, look on TV, look at the popular shows. I mean, lately TV is a little different. TV is like the new movies where there's like a bunch of good ass shows, but like look at pop culture and Kardashian and all this bullshit. That's actually the majority. I I I often forget that. That's a little deep for a video game show, but so the the game itself got flashier because that's what people wanted. People wanted the Transformers. They wanted the I don't the the story is second to just well, um, a that, stimulation. They want it they want it all stimulating all the time. But I think that it, yeah, but I sometimes I wonder whether that is really what people want or that's what Hollywood or a video game developer thinks that we want. I don't know if people I, really do want that. No, no, no. They but also I think what you're what you're also talking about is they don't want that anymore. That that's why I love following the industry is that that's fallen out of pop culture. You know, like the the Megan Foxes uh, yeah. to bring it back to entertainment. She was once popular at a point, but people are they're over that kind of woman, right? And they're onto the next. And so, well, so I mean, the, so the reason going back to the reason why I brought up Modern Warfare campaign is that as a as a linear story, well, it wasn't story driven so much, but it was it was a very very linear single player campaign, but. And it was very short because it was only about five hours, which was actually at the time I remember quite unusual. Most single player campaigns were at least eight hours, if not longer. So the modern warfare campaign was very short, but it was such a high quality that it didn't matter it was that short. And I didn't it didn't bother me that it was so linear because it was so focused in its linearity. Yes. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so very good at hitting all of those narrative high points and those gameplay high points. And they came... And the pacing of it was really good. It wasn't... What I liked about the original Modern Warfare campaign over... You know, the big complaint with the new Modern Warfare campaigns is that they're too much. And the reason why they're too much is because you're still trying to pack way too much shit into five hours. Oh, yeah. The original Modern Warfare campaign was about five hours long, but it was perfectly paced. Right, it, it, and it was a just at the right the right level where it was like, "Whoa, this shit's crazy," but it wasn't like ridiculously crazy. Yes, and so, and the reason Are I are you talking about more plot specific stuff? Not so much. Well, it was plot specific, but it was, I mean, I remember there were certain kind of like I mean, they talk about them being set pieces, right? Where they're almost like cinematics, but they're slightly interactive. You know? Yes, and so what you do they still. Call that? Something something moment. What? There's a term in gaming. So like when Resident Evil, when you're like, say you're walking, you walk oh, by a, a window. Quick, well, quick time event. Yes, that's what it is. Thank you. Um, you get James. You get me on that deep level. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think that you could really describe them as quick time events. But anyway, I mean, I think anybody that's ever played the Modern Warfare campaign knows knows what I mean. But the thing is, is that I mean. So I'm talking about the single player. I mean, we were just playing uh, Alien Isolation and my complaint about it was that it was too slow. Joe, if you listen to this, what, when you edit it, you're a fucking bitch. <laughs> also, I just rubbed my dick all over your pillow. Oh, I think you're coming back. I wonder if you're... I wonder if you're actually peeing or if you're jerking off. Probably jerking off. This is this is the either that or just the longest piss ever in the history of pissing. It's been like a minute and a half now. That's way too long for a piss. Are you checking your prostate? Is that what it is? Don't wipe your hand on my towel. I'll fucking kill you. How's that we? Oh, I love it. That's. <laughs> I think it's because I ate so many chocolates last night. Oh God, yeah, that'll do it. That is a natural laxative. Okay, alien isolation. You were shitting on it again. So speaking of laxatives, uh, I'm gonna shit all over alien isolation. 
Um, no, I... My point was that... You hated it. No, I didn't hate it, but it it was too unfocused. That was the thing. I I, I think about modern warfare... Well, see, the, here's the thing. life. No, let me. So, in, in terms of first-person shooter single-player campaigns, I've I always loved the Call of Duty games up until Modern Warfare Two, where I think it started to go weird, right? But they were all the, the Modern Warfare campaign was really focused. It was exciting in the right places. It had gameplay in the right places. It had story in the right places. It had characters. It had. It was all very good i really liked the bad company 2 single player campaign do you know that i never played it yes i do know that i've told you millions of times you should play it because it's really good well i have one and two for um i never played one. xbox 360 well two had a really i thought it was a really good campaign and but part of that was just that i mean i said about alien isolation that my, one of my problems with it was that it didn't it had nothing to give me that I'd not seen before. There was nothing new so far. Bad Company 2 had destructibility, even in the single player. Bad Company 1 had destructibility. Right, but Bad Company 2 was like on a whole... That was just... I want to think... I want to say that... Off of the chisane. I got into 1 because I was bored one day and I went through new demos. And I was like... I had never heard of it. And I just was like, oh, Bad Company. Multiplayer demo. So I played it. And I remember, I remember the map. It was it was Oasis, and I think that was the only one. But I remember playing it for the first time, and I don't think I had been that impressed with the game. And I don't know how long. I I knew it was just a demo, and I want to say first the the next day I played it for six hours straight. I don't game like that. I I almost never have, um, which is why I couldn't really do MMOs. Is because MMOs require like large chunks of time i can't uh, yeah i just can't do it but th- it blew me away it's you know we were talking the other day you were saying that uh you heard some shit with the developers that they were, they were talking about that they haven't come out with the three but it's uh, what were they saying well they said that what i read was that um they hadn't made a bad company three yet because they couldn't put their finger on why people wanted a Bad Company 3 in the first place. Not to say that they didn't know that Bad Company 2 was a really good game, but they couldn't... They said, we don't know how to make a sequel to Bad Company 2 because we don't know specifically what it is about Bad Company 2 that everybody loves so much. And when people... And when we ask people, they can't tell us either. Oh, uh, yeah. Which is... Uh, which is a bit... Uh, we both said the same thing, which was that it's kind of an odd thing to say because I think I I don't remember when I or why I played the Bad Company Two single player. I think I I think I pirated it actually. Oh my god, you are the worst! <laughs> I gotta edit that out. And I gaming. Well, industry. no, no, no. But listen, but I pirated the game. Okay. Played the single player campaign couldn't stop playing it played it all the way through i must have played that like two or three more oh, times I get you're going here. and then at some point was like wait so the multiplayer is going to have all this crazy shit in it too right and then i was like oh my fucking god and so i immediately bought it this was i mean i played that when i say i played the campaign four times i'm talking about four times in like two weeks no way it should just, i try it um, well, he, well, so here's the thing, though, is that if you've played the shit out of the multiplayer, you might play the campaign and just be like, well, yeah, but it's not really that different. Well, right, because they it's came a more, out... It's a more... It's, obviously, it's a more linear, focused sort of multiplayer Oh, with you story. know what we should play one of these days is... Bad Very com- funny. Va- Bad Company 2... Did you ever play Onslaught? I never did. That might be fun. Oh, I did play Onslaught, yeah. It's ha- kind of hard. Yeah. Um... Because that's it's fun. Ah, uh, maybe we, we should play that later tonight. Jumping then. in a helicopter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, it, essentially, it's just all it is is like co-op. It's like a co-op horde mode, or it's not a. St- 
It's not quite a horde mode, but it's not quite a story mode either. It's, uh, it's almost like a survival mode. Yeah. Well, because what you have to do is you have to capture... There's like three or four flags, pretty much. And then there's and you tons to of AI, them, right? But you have to fight against shitloads of AI. And there's like right. a lot. Yeah, I want to say like an actual overwhelming amount. Yeah, it's hard. That sounds fun, though. And, and you... um. There's tanks that you have to deal with, fucking helicopters. It's fucking crazy. But it is fun. It's actually a really good way of practicing. Which I kind of need it because since they're not coming out with a Bad Company 3 anytime soon, I'm Bad Company 2 is it for PC. That's where it is. Um, so that I'll just be playing that over and over again. Well, the thing that... I mean, to to speak to what DICE said about not knowing what it was that people really liked about Bad Company, I don't understand why they can't realize that it's that you can blow anything up. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know who. They're just, here's here's the who deal. Who the fuck are they asking? So They're asking like people that have never played the game then okay, or something. Okay, so here it is. Here it is. I should write to them because this, this is perfectly it. They managed... The reason why their game is awesome, they managed to take that tech demo feel but put it in a, an actual game that works. Because that game with the destructibility, it's like, I think of uh, the next car game, uh, that new car game. That That's essentially what it is. It's a tech demo saying that, dude, you can blow anything up. And so that's what makes it so fun. I, well, because it was one of the... I think the Bad Company 2... And I never played Bad Company 1, but I know it was kind of similar, but I always speak to of Bad Company 2 because it's the one I played and I'm very familiar with. But it's almost like... You know how you... you Because I've heard this recently so with certain games... So that'll be $50,000. That's my idea. Huh? That's my idea to the game company. That's... If the dude was asking me that... Are you that... Are you, you're out of your mind. What? So if the dude in the interview was asking me that question... Yeah. That's what my answer would be. And then he would owe me money because then they can make a three. What question? What? Oh, never $50, mind. $50,000? Yeah. What are you talking... That's my fee for letting them know what the problem is. Oh, their f- your fee? Yeah. Um, Jesus. Well, I don't... <laughs> the thing is, I don't understand they're idiots then if they can't figure it out for themselves. I mean, they made for the fucking game. So the thing was that when you say about a tech demo, I think the interesting thing is you, you know there's... Uh, what was that game recently that uh, people were complaining didn't have... Oh, it was uh, Watch Dogs. Lots of people have been uh, uh, said at the time and have continued to say that Watch Dogs had lots of stuff in their trailers and at E3 and what have yeah, you. Yeah, I, t- I was telling you that the other day too. Yeah, I've heard that from you and from uh, I've on YouTube. I've heard people say it where they were they were promised things that just never happened. Um, and, uh, what was his name? Tim Schafer recently cancelled something or something got cancelled. A game of his got cancelled, um, because he basically took money from kick, from a Kickstarter campaign, then completely changed the direction of the game. Oh, yeah. And then they ran out of money and then they had to cancel it, but they kept everyone's money. Um. And it was kind of like, the whole thing was... Well, you can't, but you can't. And then it goes on to like early access and all this and, and all that shit. And I mean, that's a whole, that's an entire other podcast is my feelings on early access. But the thing, the thing was, um, I think was amazing about Bad Company 2 is that it was kind of like they said, well, what if everything was destructible? And that's the kind of thing where you think, well, yeah, but it's not really going to be, is it? Yeah, but see, so to further, to further and my... Then, but then it turned out that it actually was. Yeah, but to further my point on the fact that of the tech demo shit is that essentially what Bad Company 2 was, Bad Company 2 was the first, or Bad Company, the original, was the first game to use the Frostbite engine. No other game had used the Frostbite engine before that. So essentially they were like, dude, look at this fucking engine we've got here. This thing is awesome. And they're like... Let's make a shooter. So, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, but they didn't fuck with the engine that much. They, it. Do you kind of get what I'm saying, or am I making no sense? Well, no. Yeah. So that's. But that's kind of what I'm saying is that they, they, they presented something and said, "Look, wouldn't this be really cool?" 
Yes. And basically so- and sold you on this idea that, well, you could just... But we've got an engine where you can blow anything up. But I kind of feel like in a lot of other cases, you get promised these sorts of things and then they, it never happens. Is that, that was my point. And th- oh, so right, it's kind of it- amazing that actually they totally delivered on what they but, promised they were going to deliver you. But th- I think that's also why a lot of people didn't hear about bad companies because they didn't promise anything. I don't think there was much leading up to it. At least I don't well, no, remember I mean, it. Pro- I mean promise in the sense that you play the demo and you go, holy shit. Right. Um, but it's not like you then play the game and it's completely different because yeah. actually the destructibility or whatever was just some sort of ruse. Yeah. It was like, no, it actually is that way. Do you, do you know that when Bad Company 2 first came out, I was a, I was almost an evangelist for the game with the people that I talked with, like other gamers, because most people that I knew were into the Modern Warfare series. And I was like, dude, those games are bullshit compared to this one. Like, I, I don't I, understand I, the Call of Duty Battlefield. What do you mean? Well, I mean, to be honest, I mean, even Battlefield Well, I think we've actually 4, yelled at each other about this. Yeah, but even Battlefield, ba- even Battlefield Four, as sort of weird as it is, and and not at all the direction Battlefield that lost I'd its wanted. direction. That's all that happened. Right, but Battlefield Four is still better than the current Call of Duty. I think Battle- Battlefield lost its shit after two, because what? Battle- well, but then there's this weird thing. Like, do we count? I Wait, mean, did I say I Battleship? Still- no, you said Battlefield. Okay, but okay. I still count Battle. I still count Bad Company as Battlefield games. I don't. It's like, I don't think it's from the same studio. I don't think in... Yeah, it's DICE. It's just DICE. Same people. Yeah, but there's something different about it. It's well, So it, so it might be by the same company, but I don't think it's the same team. It's, it's, it's not... Same. I'm almost certain it's the It's same not team. as big of a team. And so... No, I think it is. I think it's just that they... No way. They had way they more made... money behind Battlefield than they did Bad Companies. Yeah, yeah, but that but that's the thing though is that Bad Comp so they did Battlefield 2, it was on the PC. Then they did uh Battlefield They tried they did some sort of Battlefield 2 on the consoles. It was like Battlefield 2 something or other. G- they gave it like a subtitle, I think. Oh. Uh, um Oh, I know what you're talking about, I think. And then they did Bad Company 1 on consoles only. Correct. That was not on the PC. Well, I have it for. Oh, dude, I have it for 360. If you want to play it, yeah, I'd like. I'd love to play it. I'd love I'd, to watch you play it. <laughs> we should do. We should do Bad mm-hmm. Company One. That's it. Uh, and but so Bad Company, but see, Bad Company One had all that destructibility, didn't it? Yes. So that was the, so. The thing was, it was like, whoa, holy shit, what's this? And then they did Bad Company uh, Two. Which I'm getting was on a boner. PC, as well as console. About you. That's nice. And. And then. But then the weird thing was that r- around Battle, f- uh, around Bad Company Two, Call of Duty had now sort of cemented okay, itself so as the number one shooter. Okay, so here's the deal. And so I think that Dice were kind of like the thing was was that Dice got more money from EA to make Battlefield Three because EA said, "All right, fine, but we don't want you to make Bad Company Three. It's a little too quirky and not quite Call of Duty enough." So we want you to make make Battlefield Three, and we want you to tone down the destructibility. I think they were told this, to be perfectly honest, because I, d- I don't. Otherwise, I don't know why they would have done it. No, because that. Well, no, Battlefield that, Three that's was ar- much more in the yeah, in but the that's where my argument comes in. Though. Let's copy. Is that Call of they're Duty. separate teams, or or no? I don't think it's, it was. They're not affiliated, though. That's what I'm trying to say. The, it, it's like the art direction. Everything about the game. It, they might have used um, the Battlefield money, but it's it's different. Like, you can't even consider them the same thing. No, no, I know. I mean, it was always the intention that Bad Company was an offshoot of Battlefield. It was never supposed to be... Because otherwise, Bad Company 1 would have just been called Battlefield 3. Right. It was always meant to be a different game. But I don't think that it was made by different people. I think it was just a different... It was like an offshoot. I'm going to have to look more into the it. The thing, I think what it was, though, was that Battle Bad Company became like a sleeper hit, I suppose. Yeah, because it was just good. People it was that liked fun. it really fucking liked it. Yes. And they've got a lot of fun. I was. Boys. I told you about that. I, I evangelized. I was always like, I always tried to turn people that no, played I'm Modern the same, Warfare. I'm the same way. But I, I would never, in, I would never, ever 
but in our defense, Call of Duty over any kind of battlefield game. I had and multiple of those company. dudes come up to me afterwards and go, "Holy shit, you're right!" Like I had, they're, you're 100 percent right. They were like, "Dude, the destructibility, the gameplay." Um, I mean, the fucking squad spawn. Every first-person yep. shooter that you play with friends should have the ability to squad spawn. Yep. I don't care if it's medieval, futuristic. Don't even put it in the plot. Just let me spawn behind my buddy. That's it. Um, Because it keeps you on your toes, and it keeps things interesting. Even if I'm hiking through the forest, it's a lot more fun to be hiking through a boring-ass forest with your friend. And so that's it. And then we'll just, you know, we'll talk about what? Probably games, maybe. That's how our this friendship blossomed. But anyways, what I want you to do for me right now, James, is close your eyes. Mm. Don't read your phone. You need to listen uh, to me. He's not. Okay. And imagine the first time you were in a tank in that game. Mm-hmm. And you were just shelling the shit out of a building. Can you remember this time? Um... I re- yes, just I- how it, it honestly to me felt almost exhilarating, and I'm, I don't even get into games that much. Well, I remember the first time I got into a helicopter, and that was just I didn't even really know what to think. Yeah, the, t- the when tank I got into went, oh. well, when I got into a combat helicopter, and I was the gunner, and you know I've got somebody piloting the helicopter while I'm on some sort of crazy ass gun, just going do 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 do. Yeah. And then it reloads. Do, 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 do. And you just see like fucking shit blowing up down there. There's people Dude, the, flying around all over the place. And I was like, uh, yeah, what? one of the one of the times I remember is when I was playing Bad Company 1. And I had a pretty decent sound system for my house. I had some uh, two nice. Uh, well, I was actually going to say the sound was the yes. one, the very first thing. That I, even before the destructibility, the yeah. sound in that game. Yeah, I had a house. And so I had two nice towers in a center. In a 40-inch TV, and I remember sitting in front of it in the fucking sound that the tank shell makes when it reloads and hits. Yep. It is like, I was like, oh, I feel like I'm in a fucking tank. Well, do you remember the first time that a shell actually went off next to yes. you? Like, it's, you're standing next to a building and it goes off, and you just hear that whoop, yep. like that, and then everything's like, goes real quiet, yep. and then you hear that ringing. Yep. And you just hear the sound, and it kind of goes, and then the sound comes back in. I remember when that happened, and I was like, what? Yeah, and I remember times where, like, um, I, what is it? The, you're, like, creeping through a forest or something, and you're just, like, it's quiet. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, you hear the beep. The beep of Uh, a sniper's sensor ball. Yeah. And you're, like... And you look at your radar and you see that's not my teams, motherfucker. And it's just like, I don't know where they are. You just book it. It's just like, I got to get out of here because they know where I am now. That's well, it. Well, I mean, uh, my cover is blown if I was an undercover agent. Getting getting the first sniper headshot kill on heavy metal at oh, like, yeah, yeah. like 700 meters away or something or some crazy distance where I was just like, you see like this tiny, tiny speck and you put the cursor like fucking way, way, way higher. You know? Like it's all the way up and you're like, the bullet drop on this is going to be fucking crazy. And you fire that shot and then you get that little message. Plus 50. Headshot. I remember doing that in the first one. On I mean, the thing is like... Rooftops. The, the, the argument with, with between Call of Duty and Battlefield doesn't... It it's it doesn't even. I don't know how you can have that conversation with somebody. Call of Duty is better than Battlefield. Well, but can you shoot somebody from a thousand meters away in Battlefield? The, in Call of Duty, right? But the argu- So the argument is this: think you can think of Call of Duty as this. You can replace military with sci-fi to this to that. It yeah, doesn't. But, battle, but Battlefield did that. No, 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 no. I know. Battlefield but did sci-fi, and it was really good. No, what I'm trying to say though is, it doesn't matter what you're shooting. It's just map size, and you're you just want to shoot things rapidly. Whereas, Bad Company makes you feel like you're in a war. Like, it well, really makes you feel like you're part of this conflict in this ebb and flow between the enemy. Whereas Modern Warfare to me is just 
it's a free for all. You're just I'm running straight forward until I see something close enough to shoot that's not my team. Whereas in Bad Company 2, you're when I'm running through those things, I'm thinking of different things. I'm like, okay, there's a house ahead. Do I want to go to the house or do I want to go under the bridge? Okay, where's my team? I'm calculating different things while I'm doing it. Modern Warfare, you don't. Modern Warfare, you just think, point, shoot. I want that dude, that dude, that dude. Well, there's also... Not that dude. There's obviously that dude. also the team teamwork aspect of Bad Company, which is to... I mean, you don't even need to be playing with your team so much, but even just being able to drop a med pack, you know, or giving some guy ammo because he's going, yeah. give me some ammo. And I oh and I love God. and the humor in it is so great as well, Bad Company. Because I remember the first time that I heard somebody, my character, I'd throw out a bag of ammo or something, and he'd go, the character would go like, "Oh, uh, go and get some of that shit." And it cracked me up. I was like, "That's really funny." I remember a point, one of the times when I played uh, Vietnam, the add-on pack for what is it, Bad Company Two, and I remember a time <clears throat> it was really good. We were pinned down between a hut, but we were, we were on a flag. There was five of my team members. They were pointing each direction and we were in a corner. And I remember throwing a, I, I was the medic. So I was throwing med kit or uh, med kits and reviving people like all the time. And sh- there was grenades. It, it was genuinely stressful. Like yeah. I remember thinking back to it, it stresses me out, but in the, in the best way where it, it I felt like well, I was it, there. there. You get to that. There's certain, there's certain times in, in battlefield in bad company where there's just so much shit going on that you're you're kind of uh, you're not overwhelmed so much by it you, it's just the situation that you're in right. somehow is is like this overwhelming when there's like you, there's a tank outside yep. there's a helicopter buzzing around that's shelling yep um you can see that there's like dudes dying all around you and you're just in a house. Sometimes I've actually just like gone into a corner of a house and be like, I'm just going to chill here for a few minutes, like not a few minutes, but no, you need to, I'm going to just fucking chill out here for a sec because there's just too much shit yes. going on outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, then, but I, then the funny thing is, is that you'll be chilling out in the corner and you're like, well, I hope yes. that I survive this. And then all of a sudden you just hear boom yep. like that and the fucking wall disappears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now there's a tank like with its fucking gun barrel in the building with you and you're like, well, that didn't last yeah. long. Every well, the the game is just set up perfectly to have everyday moments that you want to tell a friend about. Like yep. I I remember I remember one of the first times too when I was in a tank and I realized, holy shit, there's a sniper in that building. It was like a three-story or two-story building. And I was like you know, in other games, since you you you're not gonna kill that dude, the the shell won't go through the wall. Like the wall, the wall will save him, and you're not gonna get mm-hmm. through the window. Yeah. So you kind of just have to get close enough. Whereas in this one, I realized I can just blow the fuck out of the wall, hit the wall next to the window, blew a hole in it, and I remember yep. watching dudes pour out of it. Yeah. There was four other guys in there. It's they, like stomping on an ant's nest yeah. or something. And. So the sniper wasn't bothering us anymore, but I, then I just shelled the rest of the house until it came down, and I was like, "You'll never, you'll never snipe there again." Yeah. So I just changed how you're playing the game. Well, that's the you I mean, can't that's the, change that in Modern Warfare. That is the biggest thing about Battlefield is that the round at the begin, the way that you play the map in the beginning is not the way that you will play the map at right. the end. Because you, I forget what it's called in Bad Company Two. I mean, I the played snow map. Well, yeah, I mean, you, I'm sure you have too, but I've played maps in Bad Company 2 where by the end of it, there's literally not a no. single building standing. you got to go around those, the edges where Sometimes there's, kind there's, of there's trees. few buildings that you cannot destroy, right. like the really big ones, but yep. for the most part, most of those buildings can get destroyed. Yep. And I've played, I've played many rounds of Bad Company where pretty much every building that you'd want to be in yep. for cover is gone. Yep. I mean, I know on, I remember on Heavy Metal... Actually, that really big. Oh my god! Open heavy map. metal is. And there's that middle. Else. There's that middle ma- middle map. Uh, middle. It's like a uh, tiny flag town, right? B. Yeah, and it's a tiny town. That one is usually by the end of it, fucking leveled. Yeah. And capturing that flag goes from being somewhat easy. Easy. Yeah. Well, you can hide behind to, something and if they you don't can go see inside you, a building whatever. or whatever. Whereas by the end of it, with all the buildings gone, there's nowhere to go. If you're infantry or anything like that, you're fucked. Yeah. And especially if they've got helicopters in the air or, or something like that, you, there's no way you're ever going to get that flag Ugh. without 
I don't know, some sort of miracle. Wreak, they wreak havoc on you, but it's also one of the few it games that... It was the only that thing that I didn't like, actually. The only thing that ever frustrated me about that game was was that when you got... A, you, when you got a good you chopper got, like, pilot? a decent chopper yep. pilot, he would just <laughs> rule that map, and there was nothing uh, you could do about it. There was literally nothing you could you do. You just said the phrase, decent chopper pilot. I hope you call me that one day. I'm going to get a well, hot Well, not decent, but like a good one. Right. Like, well, they would just dominate. I didn't... And sometimes you'd get two of them, uh, and then it was just like, oh, I didn't fuck. mind it to a certain degree, because... Well, the spawn camping is too spawn much. Spawn camping, that's too much. But if there's a pesky helicopter mid-map, I enjoy that. That's fun. Oh, I don't mind that so I much, like, but it was I like, love the struggle. No, but there's sometimes... you. Know, I mean, I've gone into maps. I remember because I used to play uh, Bad Company 2 on the PS3 a lot before I played it on PC. On the PS3, I always remember, you would sometimes go into a map, and... It was just they were already sp- spawn. Oh, that killing. sucked. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you'd like, spawn, where, where do I go? and you'd you'd spawn at the you'd be at the spawn, and there would already be three helicopters going around. I remember mm-hmm. Oasis sometimes was like that, mm-hmm. where they'd have all the they'd have all the flags, and they would just they'd have three helicopters just buzzing around your spawn, and you could not get out. There was nothing that you could do, and uh, sometimes I'd quit those maps, and sometimes you I know would... a game where we need to play more often is Rush, though too. I was never any good at Rush, though. It's okay. So it's, too in, it's almost no, too no, no. intense. For me. Rush with two it. people. Okay, so we can play Rush with two people, and if one of us is a, we need to be this. One needs to be medic. One needs to be assault. We can take Rush points by ourselves. Not a problem. It's fun with another. I uh, by yourself, it's a uh, and defending. It's fun with another person because you just hunker down. That's it. And it's it's fun to just camp there for a minute in the the calm before the storm, and then all of a sudden. When the enemy gets there, you're just like, that's it. They're coming for this exact box in this room. I, I know you've always been super resistant to this, but I've always uh, said that I thought that no. Battlefield 4 with the two of us would be pretty good. I don't know. I don't think I've ever actually been resistant. I, I'm just waiting for it to go on sale. I don't mind playing a Battlefield game. And I have a PC that can run I, Battlefield. I don't know why it's still as expensive as it is. I think you can get it on G2A for... The thing is, though, I actually checked the other day, and I think it, even on G2A, the base game is still 30 bucks. Yes. And I paid, I was an idiot and paid for premium as well. I paid like $110 for that game. And well, I'm, I paid, I'm I, at like level I bought 15. it on uh, 360. Is it on 360? Battlefield 4? Yeah, is it on 360? Yeah, it is, right? Or no, I didn't. Battlefield 4 was the one that everybody's bitching about because of the servers, right? Battlefield. No, it, well, it's not. Some people bitch about the servers. The but the what people bitch about is the netcode. It's that you, it just fucked up. It's like kind of like server lag. Netcode is sort of yeah netcode because it's something to do with like to each other. Well, it's something. It's got something to do with whose whose end it's on, whether it's the server or the client or whatever the fuck. I don't I don't quite understand the technology behind it. But I don't either. pretty much what it means is that you actually had to jump on a guy. But he killed you, and you're like, uh, "What? How did that happen?" And I, I've seen that. That happens to me a lot. I mean, unfortunately, I mean, I want to play it. The uh, thing is, is that bad com. Well, here was the other thing with Bad Company too, was that, and I, I, I don't actually want to talk about Bad Company anymore. But I know I'm still thinking about it. I just want to let everybody know that. But I'm not. I'm. Not, I don't want to talk about it. Bad Company Two was fun by yourself, whereas I think the big difference between Bad Company Two and Battlefield Three and Battlefield Four. And Battlefield 4 in particular, I think, is that I don't, I just don't find Battlefield 4 much fun by myself. Yes, and back, I agree with uh, you. Battlefield 3 was okay. I played that a lot by myself too, but I got to the point with Battlefield 4 where I just thought, no, I just, it, this isn't much fun by myself. Because, I mean, if I can't blow shit up, what's the point? Right. That's, that's really what it comes down to. I think with another person, it's it's a whole different thing. Yeah. Well, I liked... The, I What I always wished The is problem is that by the time you get Battlefield 4 on sale, Battlefield 5 will come out, and then nobody will be playing Battlefield 4. Right, right, right. Well, that's why I've always wanted to get... What is it? I, I mean, I know you don't want to, but it, into Day of Defeat. Day of Defeat doesn't change. It's been this... It, there's a certain... I don't know. Like, I miss that game, I guess. I used to play it a lot for PC, and it's weird to get into, but once you get the game or get into the groove of it, it's so much fun. Well, but I kind of, I mean, we, we we were playing Heroes and Generals, and that's it's almost like 
It's kind of like Day of Defeat, only less repetitive. And I always talk about games being repetitive. I don't like games where I have to play the same shit over and over again. I hate well, that. Yeah, 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 but Day of Defeat's different when it comes to... Because it's the maps are on the server, so it's about the server. You join a good server, they yeah. have an awesome rotation of maps. Plus, you you do get favorite maps, and so almost every server nowadays has map vote. So at the end of the map, the last couple of minutes, they put up a vote, and you're like, this map. I'm never really sure how I feel about map votes, though, because I've often found with games, I used to find this with Call of Duty, and I found it with Battlefield as well, was that... I actually really liked maps that a lot of people didn't like. And I never got well, to play on them because they never got voted on. And that's I've also a little difference, I think, between the... I've never agreed with the console community's map choices, if that makes sense. But PC gaming, I always have. Like, sometimes you do get frustrated because they might there might be one map that you don't particularly like. But it's still not a bad map. Whereas some of the console maps, I just hated the maps. Like... It's not just it's not that I just I disliked them. I hated them. They were like the worst. I was like if I'm playing on this, I don't even want to play this game. Whereas I never got that with the co- with computer. I was just like, "Eh, oh, this map. All right, let's do this." I think maybe it depends on the game though as well. I mean, I say that I in the case of Bad Company, there was only one map that I disliked. And I can't remember what it was called. Um, but I didn't like it. I never liked playing on it. I, uh, for whatever reason, I just could not do well on that map. Yeah. Do you, you don't have Counter Strike Global Offense, do you? Uh, no. Counter Strike Go. No, I, I think all I have is uh, Counter Strike Source. Oh, okay. We should try to when it goes on sale. I know it does it regularly. We should we should get it because you can get it for under ten bucks. You can get it for like six bucks, which isn't a bad deal. And I have a server to play on, so we can. Uh, that's a good starting point. It's fun. You get on Skype or that that's one of those games that it's it's fun with friends because you just get on whatever um voice chat and then you just shoot the shit with each other. It's not it's repetitive to the point it's repetitive in a good way because the length that you're on a map you're on a map for like maybe 10 minutes. But in that 10 minutes you probably have like 15 20 rounds. The maps aren't that big. So you're running the same route. Like at the beginning of most maps, you have like two directions, forward or backwards. And so they're they're very small and structured maps. But I liked that because you're like, all right, do I go? So I go through the garage this time or do I go out the out the garage and through the window? And then your 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 path branches from there. But I I like that repetitiveness. It's the same shit. It's funny, actually, that I say that I don't like repetitiveness, but then my favorite map on, like, excuse me, I've got the worst gassy chest right now. I've, I have a you're gassy always chest. gassy. You're a, you're a very gassy man. Uh, of uh, Call of Duty was actually Nuketown. That's my favorite map, which I think was Black Ops. In what? Actually. Call of Duty? Yeah. Nuketown. I never played Fucking much Nuketown. Great. Love that map. Love that map. Love that map. <laughs> well, I loved it because loved I always got I always went like twenty and three or something on that map. I don't know why. No, I was just always like I, I always No, I'm with you though. Because in some games there there are certain But Nuketown's like the smallest map. Yes. It's the most linear. It's, it's the, the most, most obvious. Twitch. It's Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's like any other map you in any game, you if you play it enough, you get used to where to expect people. Yes. Not to say that on Nuketown there was always like a certain spot where you could expect people because pretty much you could expect somebody to be anywhere. But um, no, I was I was really like that map, and I think that well, it's the simplicity in those. Well, and one of the things that I do understand about some people, I think, as gamers, is that maybe they don't like things like I mean, the one difference between obviously between Heroes and Generals and Day of Defeat is that Heroes and Generals, as we discovered you can be wandering around for a couple of minutes right. before you actually find anything happening yes. and then you get killed straight away yep. and you're like, oh. Right. Okay. In Day of Defeat, it's not and that And it's right. the same with Battlefield. I mean, right. I understand that some people dislike Battlefield because there is there is sometimes a lot of legwork. Yeah, yeah. Whereas with Call of Duty, you're literally, you're just always, there's always something going on. And well, I think that that's also true of Day of Defeat and Counter-Strike is right. that you don't, there's not very much downtime so to speak N- no that well see the, that's why day of defeat was fun and 
So when I think of David Defeat, I also even think of times as I had a couple of buddies back in the day that used to play it with me. Um, and we'd, we would all get on Skype at the time and we would just, we'd play for hours. Um, but I remember times where like in that game you camp flags too. But I remember sitting in prone because you go prone and then you have to set the machine gun up. Once you do, that's it. You're kind of stuck. Um, and just watching a window for 15 minutes yeah and you would eventually you know everywhere here and there you'd be like kill a dude Drrr. but for the most part it was kind of quiet yeah and i enjoyed that like that was fun in and of itself where you're just like it and i almost missed that i, I it sounds so boring no but I it's it. not no i get it though because that i've said this to you before that um my very first one of my first online shooter experiences was the original Call of Duty, back when it was World War Two. Um, I never really play. I, I didn't play that much. And I used to play on a server, and I was part of a clan. And I made my own oots for maps, life. <laughs> the maps were slightly bigger, I think, than Counter Strike maps. Even then, the call the Call of Duty maps were quite big for the time, and. Uh, and it def- that definitely was a game that would allow you to, you could play it all like crazy, or you could do what I did like to do sometimes, which was you would put a on a full rifle. outfit, World like, War Two, yeah, a bomber jacket. I'd put on my Nazi uniform, and mm-hmm. I'd um, he would I'd hail play, first, play and then duty. yeah, yeah, play. But, the, I, but I'd then, like to lie yeah. in the snow and and shoot at Americans. Yeah, you know, with my he gun. would take a laptop to the in the winter time outside. And he would lay in the snow and then shoot people. Yeah, it was more authentic that way. Mm-hmm. How'd it feel? Cold. Do you, were you exhilarated? Uh, my bits got cold because I was lying on my, on my stomach uh, the whole time. So that's why they're... Okay. Any uh, long-term damage? That's, that's why they're shrunken. Oh, so that's why they're that's like That's why they that. look like a child's. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's it. I like... Yeah, I miss Counter-Strike. Well, I do. I do kind of miss games like that. I guess. But with Counter Strike, the you almost need a quick lock. You know what is it? What was I going to say? Lock and load. Yeah, lock and load. Because you'll have matches where you'll run. You're you're alive for ten seconds in a match. You run out, bust through a window. Oh yeah. Some dudes. Some dude got there before you. Got a headshot on you. Done. Yep. And then you're like, you. That's it. You sit out for the rest of that round. And if if uh, it took well, a long ass time. Fuck. I can't do that though. No, you get used to it. That's why. No, no that's why you're on the phone. That, that's no. why you're on talk with people. No, no, no. You act like a child on the regular basis. No, no. I tell you why. Because uh, we used to play those sorts of m- maps on. Uh, what was it like? Basically, place the bomb or something in uh, Call of Duty, and but it was. Uh, I can't remember. What it was oh, called. I love those. Oh, yeah. Search and Destroy. That's yeah, what yeah, it was. yeah, yeah. And um. That's exactly what it was. Yeah, and and you, you hated would, uh, it. Well, I hated it because it was if you died, that was it. And then there'd always be some fucking noob somewhere who'd be like, "Oh, I'm just gonna sit in this corner and, and wait." And it's like, no, you gotta go and fucking defuse the bomb, you fucking idiot. You can't just sit there. And then he'd be like right. skulking around. And it's like, hey, you you realize you've only got like 15 seconds left, right? Yeah, but it, why are you why are you playing the clock out, okay, motherfucker? Okay, so so here's the deal. This is I don't want to be sitting here you, watching this shit. You, I want to be playing. You want your high level Counter Strike game up? You need to do a monitor. It. That's the other thing. It's a well. What I need to do is not die. No, and be no, the no. badass that survives the whole you thing. You do and gets monitor all the kills. it because you think of it as a way that you can do background research on whatever. You, you surf the internet. You mean, and play Counter Strike. Well, when, when you, you die, say you surf the internet, you, you mean watch porn. Yes. So queue up the most hardcore pornography <laughs> an adult can watch on one screen, and then on the second, your game. I don't think that's going to work, though, because I would probably You'd get... You'd be too horny. I'd, well, yeah, and I'd be, way <laughs> too di- I'd be way too distracted. And also, my boner would get in the way of well, that's what, no, arm yeah, but that's that why would the, be required for playing No, but in, in preparation of this, you need to jerk off 16 times. You got to get that thing real done, done for before you do it. Wow. So when you're like, hey, you want to play some Counter Strike? And I'll be like, hold on, I'm only 14 in. Yes. I've got to jerk off two I more gotta, times. I got to pop that, pop it off once more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At least one more time. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so you have to I'll just be jizzing so, blood. So in order to play Counter Strike, you need to dual monitors and a friend. That's a lot of requirements. 
when you need dual monitors with porn on, you have to jerk off at least 14, while 15 I'm a, times. While I'm on chat with you, for, I want to hear your voice, though, <laughs> going, why the fuck did I just die? Wait, what? No, nothing. Voice chat. Huh? While I'm jerking off or while I'm playing? No, both. All. We're oh. always on voice chat. You know what I'm saying? That's where the that's where it gets real kinky. Yeah, with <laughs> there's that there's that uh, there's that video I uh, video camera I installed in your bedroom. I have two webcams in my room. Whoa, that's creepy. It's to get that 3D porn. I make porn is it for a living. Anyways, <laughs> video games. Mordor. 3D porn. Do you know that I didn't What's even talk about porn, Mordor? Then? No, we started talking about Papers. Mordor about Papers, an hour ago. Should we play it? What? Mordor. Or should we play? I don't even know. What should we play? Um, We should play Ali Ali. It's like the super meat boy of 2D skating games, if that makes any sense. What? Yeah. You never heard of this? No. Yeah, it's like, it's an arcade game. I love super meat boy. It's, it's, It's an arcade game where you grind, but you do tricks, but you fall once you're dead. So you're essentially skipping grinds. It's... It's insane. It's supposed to be insane. It's like a trials. I don't know if I can do that. Well, right now, I don't know if I'm. I think we. I think mentally you could. capable of that. No, I think you could, until you would curse at it for too long. So, <laughs> that's going to be right now. Yep. All right. Well, oh, my um, back hurts. That ends today's show. Uh, thanks for listening. And I hate James. Hey, can I just... Can no. I? No! No, 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 wait. Stop. I just want to... What's your sign-off? No, I want to point this Tickle out. Tickle these nuts. Because I think this is amusing, is that this this actually started out as us just talking, and then Joe hit record. And this has pretty much just been... This would have happened anyway, so... Right. That's why this is so awesome. Well, that's why we, that's why we as gentlemen, are designed to do this. This what, is what we do in our spare time. What the, what the point I'm trying to make is that uh, anybody that's listening to this, you're welcome. <laughs> I agree. 